Hello. So here I am in a glass bubble of sorts, and I'm using this for the first time. I've just learned to write backwards, so this is going to be handy. I um, want to prove half of the uh, short five lemma. So in this version, we have uh, exact rows, and we have g is injective. So actually, I can put a little hook here. And we also know h is injective. Put a little hook here. And we want to show that f is injective. So since we have exact rows, we know, for instance, that alpha prime here is injective. By the way, these are all R modules, where R is just a commutative ring. Um, and so let's begin the proof. We're going to assume g is injective, h is injective. We want to prove f is injective, given that the rows of the diagram are exact. So let's start as any injective proof for f would start. Let uh, y be in the kernel of f. This is the start of our proof. So what is it we want to show? We want to show that this kernel of f is trivial. It only contains one element. We'll call it 0 sub y. So it suffices to show it suffices to show the following. It suffices to show that this y we picked in the kernel is exactly equal to this 0 sub y. And then we will get uh, that the kernel is trivial and hence f is injective. So let's just follow our nose. I don't have a lot of board space in this bubble. So instead of writing full sentences, I think what I'm going to do is just write stuff that not as I would like you to turn it in as a proof, but just like basically the nuts and bolts of everything that's happening. OK, so y is in the kernel of f. What does that imply? That means f takes y to the 0 sub y prime, the 0 in here. Uh, and that implies then that uh, beta prime of f of y is equal to the zero in um, the module z prime. But that means then that f of y is in the kernel of beta prime, but we actually don't care about that. By, by community of the square, commutativity of the right square Oh, you may not be able to see that. Let's go up here. Well, by commutativity of the right square, we all know then that if we travel um, from h of beta of the y that's here, that's the same as traveling from beta prime of f of the y. But we just learned that y is in the kernel of f, so this is really just beta prime of 0 sub y prime. But beta is a homomorphism. So this is just the 0 in z prime. Or actually, yeah, 0 in z prime. Well, that, that was an extra thing. I didn't need to actually write that, because we already had beta prime of f of y as 0 sub z prime. I think I wrote that because I just wanted to write the word boy prime. Ha ha ha. OK. That's my only funny. There's going to be no more other funnies. But uh, that was not necessary state. We could have gone straight from here, because I had that there and written that there. But I'm not going to erase. Uh, you get the picture, though. That says the word boy. Whatever. OK, so what do we have? I have h takes beta of y to the h takes beta of y to the 0 in uh, z prime. Hence, that implies then that beta of y is in the kernel of h. But by assumption, h is injective. So this kernel of h is really just one element, 0 sub z. So that means that beta sub y in particular is equal to 0 sub z. But that means then that y is in the kernel of beta. 
But we have exactness in the first row, in particular exactness at y says that the image of alpha is equal to the, to the kernel of beta. So this kernel of beta is actually equal to the image of alpha. So that means then that there exists an element x, little x, and big x, such that alpha takes this little x to this y. Okay, so now let's travel around the right square. Remember the goal. The goal is to show that kernel is trivial, kernel of f is trivial. So it suffices to show that this y that I picked in the kernel is actually equal to zero. I know that alpha x maps to this y, so maybe we can get this x to be zero. Let's just uh, see what we can do here. Or inevitably, we have not used the injectivity of alpha prime, which is guaranteed by exactness at x prime, and we have not used the injectivity yet of g, right? So let's travel around by community of the square here. Um, so, by commutativity of the left square, so we have a little x in here. I know that alpha prime of g of this x is the same as f of alpha x of x. But alpha of x is equal to y, and y is in the kernel of f, so f of y is equal to, oi, yeah, uh, o sub y prime. So that means that g of x, and this is in the kernel, is in the kernel of alpha prime. Yay! Now we can use the injectivity of alpha prime. Uh, alpha prime is injective, so this thing is equal to just one element in the domain of alpha prime. Um, and this is since alpha prime is injective. So that means then that g of x is in particular equal to 0 sub x prime. But g is also injective. So this thing, um, so that means then uh, g of x being 0 sub x prime means that x is in the kernel of, of g, which by the injectivity of g is just the 0 in x. Since g is injective. Okay, getting down to the bottom of the board, and hopefully we can kill this now. So, in particular, this, if this x is in the kernel of g, which is an element that contains, a set that contains one element, that means x in particular is equal to 0 sub x, which means then, since that we have, where are we? Alpha takes x to y, this means that alpha, um, let me just erase this. I want to do this with the nicest space here. Since we have 0 is equal to alpha of x, that's true because x is 0 sub x, so alpha is a homomorphism. It takes zeros to zeros. Um, so it's like subscript is 0. But alpha sub x is equal to y, therefore we are done. So y is equal to 0 sub x, so the kernel is trivial. So in this little bit of space I have left, f is injective. <laughs> there is very little space here, so I'll just write my QED up here. Yeah, yeah, we did it. Woo, woo, yeah. Oh boy, yeah. Okay, so... Again, a cleaner proof would not look like this with all these arrows here. Some sentences would be good, like removing these existential, like, shorthand. I just, it, this was, this is the proof you do when you're living inside of a glass bubble, as I do. Um, and uh, some justifications need to be done, of course, if this is done well. I mean, I said the kernel is equal to this set only because alpha prime is injective, but I didn't say that up here. You know, here I should justify since H is injective. 
I mean, if you're turning in a proper proof, of course, you, you justify everything. And, um, and of course, if you only have a tiny bit of space, well, then you need a bigger piece of paper. So your teacher or the, or the grader, whoever the person will be, will be pleased with your proof. Um, yeah, so this is half of the uh, short five lemma. The next thing I'll do, well, after, well, if G is surjective and H is surjective, then F is surjective. You put those two together, then you get if the outer rungs, oh, also we need uh, exactness at Z to do that, and we do not need exactness at X prime to do that. And then if we have exact, if both rows, if we have exactness at Z and exactness at X prime, then we know that if G and H are isomorphisms, then that'll imply that F is an isomorphism. And that is essentially the short five lemma. Uh, fun. Talk to you later.